This is John Caglione, and you are listening to The Movie Raid. It's time for The Movie Raid, and tonight's victim is makeup artist John Caglione Jr. that has done many films such as Dick Tracy, The Dark Knight, amongst others. Hello. Mike, how are you, man? What have we been up to lately or uh, have been in the works for a while? Well, I, I trimmed the bushes around my pool yesterday, and I got up on a ladder. I got about four feet off the ground. I'm pretty proud of myself. Well, every day is an adventure, isn't it? <laughs> You know, you know, the film business is topsy turvy right now with this whole thing. So we're just hanging tough, man, waiting for something to open up soon. I work a lot with Al Pacino. Uh, you know, I've been with him since Dick Tracy, and uh, we did this TV series called Hunters, which was on Amazon. It's just great to be with Al again, and it's an honor. We shot that all in New York here, and at Steiner Studios, which is incredible, and all over the city. And it was just just a dream job. Great crew, really great producers, David Wheel and Nikki Toscano, the producers, and just great directors. It was a blast. Do you think difference in character will be different representation with with this different way of filmmaking today? Once once it gets around the bend, so to speak. Every job is always you know a, a learning curve, which is what you're looking for. You try to always learn something new about a character or a story. You just read, instead of reading books, we get to read scripts and you know put our imaginations to the test, and it's what I enjoy. Character development, helping the actor help create a character, actor or actress. There's certain protocols now that we have to follow on set, social distancing, wearing masks, you know, being tested temperatures, just the protocol of working and coexisting on a set, eating meals and uh, no more craft service tables. I understand there's no more craft service tables. So just the physical protocol of making a film, sure, sure, that's going to change. It has. Well, how do you predict, especially the makeup department or special effects, do you think that might hinder a little bit because of these restrictions? Because you're working with different kind of bases of either chemical or, or, or other stuff that you were used to and were allowed to use, but now you think this is they're going to limit that too, and as well as the creativity process? I don't know. You know, I, I haven't really been on a set. Seeing some friends now, they're working, and producers, friends of mine, but I don't think the actual physical work changes too much. I've heard that they're going to stagger actors into the trail. Where I've read you know, articles where they'll, you, know, you would have a whole trailer of actors maybe and you'll have to wear a mask and face guard and things like that keep a certain amount of uh, separation between the actor and the and the artist. We'll, we'll get through it. We'll figure it out. Now, how would you want to proceed this, like, even though when this happens, would you, would you rather choose a specific area of the type of work that you like to be less restricted from or, or would you really be okay with just taking whatever's there it, despite of how may, contained it might be. It's just in our business anyway. You, you take every job and you, it's what we do. You know, I don't know about a, many artists, unless you're very fortunate, that can pick and choose jobs. You take what comes and then you try to figure it out in every way, in every regard. And I think in the days uh, in months of coronavirus, it's just another thing you have to figure out and work with. So It, it seems like the creativity might hinder a little bit because they're trying to almost have to piece it and piece it and piece it and step by step instead of going through the usual process. Yeah, I guess you could be right. I, beyond just the creative thing about making a film, I just think for producers, maybe from a producer standpoint, actually getting a shooting day in might be a little difficult with this thing because people have to stop and mask and maybe actors get staggered in and out of the trail instead of getting all actors in and out, you know, and onto the set. The time of shooting day, you know, might stretch. I'm guessing we'll figure itself out. There's a producer, a friend of mine, and she is in Hollywood working on a show and she says it's all about just protocol, washing your hands, wearing the mask, social distancing and just I guess basically maybe a little bit more than what we're doing every day. The feeling I get from her is that it's not as bad as everyone thinks it is on the set. There are protocols, you know, where you have to sterilize your brushes and your, I mean, which you should always do anyway. I mean, make sure you're working with clean instruments and brushes and tools when you're applying makeup and disposable things like disposable mascara wands and disposable eyeliner uh, brushes. And, but they, they, there are UV machinery that you can put your tools in after you clean them with alcohol and 
other solvents and you put them in the UV cleaner and it cleans them for the next application. So, yeah, those types of things are all, I mean, it's just a good protocol and free coronavirus. But in this profession, is it best to balance or even divide impression and expression to make the concept more approachable on the character? I mean, that, that really depends on the character. It really depends on the face and, you know, the subject matter and everything else. The example that comes to mind for me is if you've seen the movie The Exorcist came out in the mid-70s, the old father, Marin, in the film was played by Max von Sydow and Max von Sydow, I think was only like 47 years old at the time and Dick Smith, you know, the master makeup artist Dick Smith, back in 1974, 75, did one of the most incredible makeups, old age makeups, I think, in history. He aged Max von Sydow to be old Father Marin, and the guy's whole face is rubber. It's all prosthetics. There's a case of, you know, a makeup that kind of flies under the radar. It's totally believable and works in the fabric of the story. You don't even look at it. And then, on the other hand, you have, you know, Linda Blair's demonic makeup, kind of a reality-based fantasy makeup, and a realistic, highly realistic old age makeup back in 1975 in that film. So it depends on the script, the story, the actor, so many variables. The director, what the director wants to see, it really is a collaborative. It's a delicate balance in between the two, because sometimes you have to make it more of an impressionist of, of the character and sometimes you have to make it more of expressive but of course it does depend on the character depending on what, what it, whatever it is you do because it does have a big different effect on each and especially genres like if it's a monster it's, it's definitely going to make a huge difference between a dramatic character and you can't just slap on something and because and, and, and you can overdo it or you can underdo it and sometimes you can meet in the middle and sometimes right. it's, and sometimes right. it's even worse than that and it's a really delicate process so having you to go through this process as you go and even though you're working with other people it's like a, a, a subdividing the, the same thing having to make this character go it, because you're adding an emotional element to the actor's uh, yeah. character himself and they're the ones that basically mouth and move and it's almost like a puppet you gotta have someone to be behind it and also well, bring it to life I mean that's the soul right there man you know it's like you do the exterior and then the, the actor brings the life to it it's the soul the, the total existence of the character is really the actor that's a fact and of course adding the element of, of the special effects and of course the special effects but adding the makeup, you yourself, or adding that character, adding adding expression, adding age, adding whatever it needs to be to add that extra element to it. Because it's it's like an old house. An old house has old paint, so you decide to put new paint on there. But that old paint, it's still there because it still has the two elements together, but you got a fresh new view to the audience that, that looks at the house. Right, exactly. Yep, absolutely. When an idea is drastically altered how does the artist actually maintain aspiring attitude and, and that focus to make that concept idea a part of their own work without fault and i know fault is always going to be there but how can they achieve that i know it's a tricky process i don't know man it's such a collaborative thing when you whenever you're designing any kind of makeup i mean it's the actor it's the director uh, but ultimately it's really your hand and your eye and your brain working toward that to try to produce the character or the makeup that fits best uh, you know with the actor's envisioning and the director and the, the script so there's a lot of forces at at work there you know but ultimately you know, it's really your hand on it, so there's a part of the expression of yourself that goes into a layer of it as well. Or at least I would like to think so. And every artist in the world, and everybody in the world, wants to have that good career uh, of what they're what they're working on. And Fulta is going to be there because you're you're applying something to a character, and because you're the one that's looking at this character, you're the one that's looking more observant compared to the director, compared to the actor themselves. And the audience eventually, you're always going to have a couple people going to say, "Well, that that doesn't look very." Good. that doesn't look very good and that's where your fault is and, and that's where doubt comes in and then that's where uh, that's gonna be a whole train wreck of everything through the next you know next project or two yeah i mean yeah, of course everyone you know like you could be in any art gallery and look at paintings when you're walking by and some people are actually digging that painting on the wall and some people are like to just walk right by it so it's all interpretive art isn't it there's certain music you, you might let like, you know, Led Zeppelin, I love Steve Ray Vaughan, so it's like, there's Jimmy Page, great guitar player, and then there's Steve Ray Vaughan, so it's to each his own, man, you know, it really just comes down to that. My job is just to, to make the actor feel good in the chair, that he can, or she can look in the mirror, and it helps their performance. 
if that works for the actor, then I've basically done my job. Yeah, and then there's also the, the uh, art aspect of things. You can apply art, but you don't have to advertise it as art on some of these artists that really wanted to uh, present that and presenting to just get the job done and make sure that the character looks like the character as given. That That's where it should be, not like, oh, well, this is how I formed it to be. Well, that that's cool, but you're applying your ability over professionalism. Well, yeah, there's always that. In, I guess what you're saying is you're hired as an artist to create uh, for a script, for an actor. Like I said earlier, ultimately, you know, your fingers are in the clay and you're sculpting and designing. So I can tell just in the sculpture and the final makeup now, looking at, at makeup for over 50 years now, what makeup artist designed that makeup? I don't even need to see the film credit. I can just tell their style in the makeup. I can tell just by they sculpt certain things in the makeup that they have a certain, like Rick Baker or Rob Bottin or any other great makeup artist. You can, you, I can just tell they have a signature style all their own. It's just like, like if you were going to play a uh, blues guitar. Guitar, you can, you know, if you're into guitar, you'll know what Al Albert King sounds like. You'll know what uh, B.B. King sounds like. It's in there. It's built into the design of the makeup and the music. Go and plug in any websites or anything that you care to promote or share to, to the audience that you'd like to add as well. Oh, well, you know, I, I have a website. I may be so uh, bold as to they can go on, you know, my website, John Caglione. Uh, and, you know, I've got a lot of stuff up there. And check it out. Well, there you have it, everybody. That is John Caglione, makeup artist.